I'm Eric. I'm Connor. And, and this, this is a PIO, PIO vlog. vlog. Special fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Uh, 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 reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Callers, complaints seen coming out of the unit. Hustle party trapped. If there's an older lady that lives there, she's not seen. Right, medium sized, two story multi family. We have a small complaint showing up. Alpha side, I'll be assuming command. We're manning offensive strategy. We do have extensions to the second floor. Headed to the third. Let's go ahead and start a second alarm. 334, Cali 35, Land as well. Go wrong, 811, 1342, 1338, 1342, Medic 211, Medic 21, Battalion Chief 3, Battalion Chief 5, Safety 35. Three, hey everyone, welcome back to our vlog. We are so excited to see you all as always. We hope you've had a great week and have an awesome weekend planned ahead. We know we just had a vlog recently, but Eric and I have a lot to get you guys caught up on. I've been solo here in our district this past week because Eric is deployed as a PIO on the Cameron Peak Fire burning in Colorado. He has a super cool update that we're gonna bring you here in this vlog. And we also are going to talk about some insights incidents that have happened around our district. But first off, we got to start this vlog with a big thank you to all of you to getting us to 100,000 subscribers. It is absolutely insane. Eric and I sometimes don't even know the words to express our gratitude to all of you for tuning into our videos, for sharing them with your friends, and for always coming back for more. Thank you guys for making this channel what it is today, and we cannot wait to bring you even more exciting videos in the future. I also want to thank everyone for helping us get to 100,000 subscribers. It's super exciting and we couldn't have done it without all of you. As soon as we get that silver play button, which I've heard takes a little while, Connor and I will be sure to do the unboxing with you. Now let's get you guys caught up on what's been going on in South Metro's district. Recently, firefighters responded to a hazardous materials investigation at Littleton High School in the city of Littleton. Before firefighters got on scene, there were reports of a custodial crew inside the school at the time and there was a strong chlorine smell and someone had inhaled that substance and was having a reaction to it. So firefighters got there on scene, they treated that person, transported them to the hospital and luckily it was in non-life-threatening condition. Hazmat 38, Engine 17, Medic 12, Battalion Chief 2, Safety 18, Med 1, Rehab 12, Metcom Ops 3, Hazmat, Map Page R23D, at Littleton High School, 199, East Littleton Boulevard. Command, Battalion 2. Battalion 2, go Hey, Lindsay, I'm on scene. I'm just parked next to the ladder. Um, I copy, we've got one patient, and ladder 12 Bravo is treating them outside on the east side, and that your crew of three is on air, and that you're investigating, and then we have personnel evacuating the rest of the building. Is that correct? And can I get a CAM report? Chief, that's correct. I'm working with an RP to identify the specific location of the pool. He's giving me better directions. We've got our pH paper. We're going to try and confirm or deny chlorine, and then we'll back out for a, uh, a regroup in a different plant. Okay, Cobb, you got pH paper. You're going to try to confirm chlorine. You're with a building representative. Of After further investigation, it was discovered there was a tube in the pool control area of the school containing chlorine and muriatic acid, also known as hydrochloric acid. That system was charged, but the valve was not open at the time, and that's when that gaseous substance leaked into the pool area. The South Metro Hazardous Materials team came to the scene with both of their rigs. They wanted to have a safe plan in place before making entry into the school in order to isolate and mitigate the problem. And you may not think that chlorine is a big issue being in a pool area in the summertime, but with this mixture of these substances together, it can be very dangerous to inhale this. So they wanted to make sure they had the correct 
protective equipment on at the time. Firefighters put on their level A hazmat suits to enter into the building and in the meantime the HVAC system was turned off to make sure that that substance didn't leak into further areas of the school and the entire school was evacuated. When firefighters entered in they recorded all of the levels in the air and also were able to mitigate the source in the pool area. They ventilated this structure and luckily it was only in the pool area that this was impacted so school was able to be held the next day. What's up guys so I'm vlogging to you from my garage at home checking out my MDT. South Metro is part of a task force that is currently responding to the Cameron Peak fire in Larimer County and I just got requested to go help as a PIO so I'm going to take you with me. Colorado this is where the incident command post and staging area is and I just ran into South Metro's task force they are getting ready to go up to the Red Feather Lakes community to do structure protection and they're rolling out right now. the morning of September 8th. Uh, this is the first full day that I'm gonna have on the Cameron Peak Fire and Colorado weather's kind of crazy so it is for sure snowing here at the command post. <clears throat> There's already over an inch of snow on the fire itself and the fire grew to over 102,000 acres last night. So it's still ranked as the fifth biggest fire in Colorado's history and hopefully the crews are able to keep it at that size, especially after all the snowfall. Good morning, guys. It is 6.30 in the morning on Wednesday, September 9th. It's my second full day at the Cameron Peak Fire, and you can see behind me, my truck is covered in snow. The fire is covered in snow, but it's still not done yet. There's a lot of work to do. So this is Poudre Canyon Fire Station 2, also known as Drop Point 375 on the Cameron Peak Fire. So this is an area where operations is working out of, coordinating all the activities for the branches and divisions up here, and a local fire station that responds in this area. I'm getting ready to go out and do some photography and videography with operations. Uh, the area is finally sunny and warm after several days of being socked in, and it's been hard for firefighters to actually find the fire perimeter because of the snow on the ground. So today is one of the days where it's probably all gonna melt off at the lower elevations and crews can get back to working more line construction. I'm on my eighth day of a 14 day assignment working with an incident management team and a group of 18 PIOs to get messaging out to the community about everything going on at this very large incident. As of today, the fire is the fifth largest in Colorado State history. It's over 102,000 acres. So far in the incident, there have been 54 structures destroyed and 25 of those were homes. My job on this incident has been a technical specialist for photography and videography. So most of my job has been visual storytelling and that's included going up to the fire and working with operations up there to capture what's happening. The fire itself is actually close to a two hour drive from the incident command post, which is kind of a crazy concept to think about. We're used to incident command post being right on scene, but in this case, we need a very big spot which is a convention center, a very big place for a lot of people to stay, which is a hotel attached to it, lots of parking area and lots of services around, which has to include a lot of power and a lot of internet service to be able to do the job that everyone here has to do. When I first arrived on this incident, it was a type one incident. We had a type one incident management team. It was one of the National Incident Management Organization or NEMO teams based out of Portland, Oregon. And they were overseeing two type two incident management teams. We had Rocky Mountain Team Black and Southwest Area IMT Team Three. At this point in the incident, things had been scaled back. The incident received a lot of snow over the past week. In fact, some, some places on the fire received 16 inches of snow and it still didn't put the fire out. 
Now the conditions are warmer, there's a little bit of a wind, the relative humidity has dropped, we're starting to see some active fire on the ground along the perimeter. Speaking of the perimeter, this 102,000 acre fire is 237 miles around. Imagine all of that fire perimeter that has to be checked and that firefighters have to work. Yesterday while I was up at the fire, I got to watch several Type 1 helicopters working on the northwest edge, and here's some video of that. If you'd like to follow along with the Cameron Peak Fire, check out the official Facebook page, and there is also a YouTube channel that features our morning daily updates, as well as videos that I'm creating. Thank you so much for that update, Eric. I'm excited to hear more stories from your deployment once you get back into town. I also wanna tell you about a few other incidents that happened in our district recently. We had two motor vehicle accidents into structures. The first one was on South Espana Street in Un incorporated Arapahoe County. It was on one of our snowy days and our firefighters responded to the scene of a car that had crashed into the back of a home. Nine five on scene. We'll be investigating. Nine five on scene. Investigating. 1742. Two. Go around and give me a 360 and let me know what we have back there. Two copy. We're on scene. We'll complete a 360. Oh, Battalion 5, engine 22. Battalion 5, go ahead. We do have a vehicle SUV into the back side of the building, Charlie's side. Party's trapped. Engine 22 will be investigating. Copy, I'll send Medic 23 around to your location for medical treatment. We'll work on an extrication plan. Medic 42 arrived, level 1. When firefighters arrived on scene, they found that the car had gone across a stretch of grass through the back fence and into the back side of the home. The driver was still inside the vehicle at the time having a medical emergency. Firefighters extricated that person and transported them to the hospital. The Rescue 34 crew came on scene to assist in stabilizing the structure and to work on getting the car out of the home. Because it was such a wet day, there was snow on the ground, the tow truck was unable to make its way across the grass in case it got stuck. So firefighters built a picket system anchor using a grip hoist to remove the car from the structure, bring it all the way across the backyard and across the stretch of grass in order to put it onto the tow truck. So they were on scene for a few hours making sure this happened, but eventually the car was removed and the person that was inside the home at the time was not injured. A few days later, South Metro responded to report of a vehicle that had gone through the front of a UPS store in the city of Littleton off of South Broadway. Mac on 5018. 5018's on scene Broadway. We have one vehicle through the glass into the UPS store. Um, I'll be out investigating, checking for injuries and be command. When firefighters arrived on scene, they did find a car inside of the store and the driver was not injured and was assessed on scene and did not have to be taken to the hospital. Firefighters found damage to the front glass door and windows of the structure, as well as some minor damage inside, but no major structural damage was found. Firefighters were able to put the car in reverse. It was still drivable and remove it from the structure. A tow truck company came to the scene and took the car away. Luckily, no one was injured inside the store at the time of the crash, and Littleton police determined that the cause was accidental. Here at South Metro, every year we always honor and recognize memorials that happen in our district as well as around the world. Recently, it was the 31st anniversary of Captain John Hager's line of duty death while with the Castlewood Fire Department. While battling a fire in Greenwood Village at the Marco Polo restaurant, the roof collapsed on Captain Hager. 
Family and friends gathered at the South Metro Memorial Plaza recently to honor his life and ultimate sacrifice that is as present this year as it was in 1989. And just a few days after Captain Hager's memorial, this year marks the 19th anniversary of September 11th. Every year, we never forget the men and women who lost their lives that day. Today marks the 19th anniversary of the terrorist attacks on the United States, the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The world changed that day. The fire service changed that day. Let us never forget the heroism that occurred in the planes. Let us never forget the selfless and compassionate acts of our fellow men and women. Let us never forget the 343 of the FDNY. Please join in a moment of silence as we remember all those that we have lost since that fateful day 19 years ago. All right, you guys, now it is time to wrap up our vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. But before we go, we have patch shout outs. The first ones are from Mexico, and I hope I am pronouncing this correctly because uh, it is quite often that I mess up. So I apologize if I mess up. Uh, this is from Italy Paramedicos or Italy Paramedicos. We also have the Rescate patch and the Medical patch. Thank you so much. The next patches we have are from Germany. The first one is from Koblenz. And we have the new and old versions of this one as well. It's the old version of the Maltaser and the new version of that patch. Thanks so much. And from this department, we also have some photos that they sent of their apparatus and their, uh, their different units. There's a little dog on that one as well. And here's another one. Thanks so much for sending those our way. Okay. We have the Deer Park Fire Department from New York. Thank you. We have the Norwood Fire Company number one ambulance patch. That's from Pennsylvania. We have the New Bremen Bluebirds Fire Department. That's a call going off in the district. All right, let's head out. I need to check on this call first. And this is from the New Bremen Fire Department in New York. Thanks so much. This one is the Visalia Fire Department in California. The next one I have is from the Embry-Riddle Emergency Response Team in Daytona Beach, Florida. We have one from Montreal, Canada. This one from Lee Fire Rescue in Maine. This one from Baghdad, Iraq Fire Rescue. And a few to finish off our shout outs are Bay Shore Fire Department, Long Island, New York, as well as New York Police Department Emergency Squad, and the New York Police Department Emergency Medical Squad. Thank you so much, everybody, for trading with us. We always love adding these to our collection and seeing where they come from around the world. If you haven't already done so, make sure you go find that subscribe button, click it, and you can sign up for alerts. And that way, you know right when we have a new video. And you can also explore all of the other videos on our channel. We hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening or your day, wherever you are around the world. And we'll see you next time. A wide range of services around, including good internet, So there's something for a blooper reel.